<laughs> yeah, they could boo us, but whatever. <laughs> We're back with another week of Bad Inputs. Welcome to the number eight episode for the Bad Inputs podcast. Ooh. I'm here We're almost with 10. CJ Ferg. How Hello. I am good. How are you today, sir? And my name is Tokalurk, and I'm doing well. Good, this has been good. a very <laughs> uh, productive week. It lots has. of spitballing. Lots of ideas flowing around. Mm-hmm. Working on some projects that you guys got to know about. We can't tell you. You're going to be excited. It's going to be fun. We got we got uh, real film majors on board now, so we're going to have some fucking legit-ass live-action stuff. That's all I'm saying. That's as far as we can basically go. We're taking you from the virtual world to the real world. I-R-L. L-O-L. Soxie. But uh, this is the week of May 10th. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, already. Yep. This is already heading into summer. Yeah, we're pretty freaking close. It was almost raining two fucking days ago. <laughs> well, fuck this, fuck this town. It was damn near flooded. Uh, this, that's partly this fucking... Oh, shit. Bleep that out. Uh, this weather is shitty. It's just it's so up and down. It's, it's, never, it's never set. And unless it's summer where it's you know constantly 112 freaking degrees. The damn dust bowl that we live in that we call Awesome Town. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, yeah. now we're the city we're a city of hope, apparently. What? Well, we told John Tron that's awesome town. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now yeah, it's that's both. right. We told John Tron about our town. <laughs> no big deal. Whatever. He, he was here. No, we thought we had we had lunch with him. Oh, Talks. yeah. Oh, I forgot. That's yeah. some ideas out there. You yeah, know. get old Johnny boy. Don't, don't mean the name drop on you guys. Yeah. but We know John Tron. <laughs> <laughs> I call him. I called him. I called him uh, Golden because you know because he's Johnny Boy. You know, John, you're gonna stay Golden. I call him the real JT. The real JT. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, JT? It's <laughs> <laughs> my bird call. That's my bird call. I got for him. <laughs> we don't do handshakes. We do bird calls. I hit him up on his Boost Mobile. Be like, where you at? <laughs> Bring. Oh God, that fucking those commercials were. I feel like they like from what I remember, they like tailed off. It just turned into like. Oh, here, use it in construction or use it for, like, people who are far away. And then it turned into, here is a bunch of people just, like, hanging around at a fucking neighborhood. And they're just like, where are you at? This is the easiest way for me to hit up my drug dealer. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> where you at, dog? <laughs> but it, I, I'll hand it to them. It was simple marketing. It was. Like, four words, three words. Where are you at? Yeah, see, look at that. Yeah, three even, words. Even hooligans back then, the old Boost Mobile phones could count the words that are in that stupid advertisement. Yep. And they got all the celebrities. <laughs> It worked, man. It worked. That's that's all that matters. Hold. Oh, by the way, if you guys are hearing plastic, I am uh, it's icing my uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought we'd do a Barbie girl reference on the show. Well, it's all right. No one knows who Aqua is, except for <laughs> the people possibly listening to this show. Mm-hmm. That should be Aqua. You mean Aqua? <laughs> yeah, Aqua. <laughs> you mean special guest doing anything right now. <laughs> Reach out. Check us out on youtubecom slash bad inputs, <laughs> and uh, let us know. Yeah. We'll try and get you back up on top. I mean, you're no better than us right now. So have, let's just be real. I have three songs by them. You have three songs? That is two songs more than I know of Aqua. Yeah, only because because they're great. No, oh, okay. They're great artists. Yeah, they are. They're amazing. They're amazing. The artists uh-huh. of our generation. Yeah, not, yeah. not music that makes you crack up at all. All right, so what, <laughs> what are we looking at? Is it time? Yep, it's but, time. This big, fat voluptuous board of news oh, that we it have is, today. It is quite voluptuous. It looks, God, just succulent. We got one, over. two, three, four, five, what? Yeah. Six, seven, eight. Succulent board. Nine stories today. Supple, yet soft and, and rough. Tight. <laughs> Tight. And taut. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, and that's like, that's why I want my news. <laughs> Tight and taut. Taut. And tight and, uh, and punctual. <laughs> That's how I need my news. And enunciated <laughs> all the time. Uh, all right, so we have. God, I feel like I feel like we just start off with Nintendo news, or it always ends up being somehow the biggest or something. So today we got Pokemon starters revealed for Sun and Moon. Yay! What everybody's actually been waiting for, knowing the three Pokemon you're going to start your journey with. Who are they? They are, are they? Rowlet. Mm-hmm. Rowlet, an owl who is grass and flying, who looks like it has a bow tie made of leaves. It's actually quite adorable. I can take it. Um, then we got Litten, which just sounds like kitty litter with kitten, oh. to be honest. But it's a fire cat. Is that it because would... it's lit? It's... Oh, Jesus Christ. I didn't say it. 
I, you know At what? TK I Breezy fucking said it. Da- Is that what he said? Yeah. TK, yeah. I love you, man. You're a great commentator and a great streamer. Cut that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, streamers can do puns? Streamers can do puns, but god damn it. He even he literally put a tweet that says the first joke you make is the wait. No, was that him? Somebody said that. First commentator said it was the first joke you make, it might be the worst one, so usually let that shit go. He went with the first joke, in my opinion, on that, but whatever. It's fine. It's fine. He can do what he wants. He's he's far more successful than There'd us. Be whatever. So much dead air though, people didn't go with their first joke in mind. There is a lot of they'd be like, wait, hold on. I've got a better one. Wait. Yeah. Mm. You fuck your mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got you there. Fuck. That was still my first joke. God damn it. <laughs> uh, and then we got Pop Poplio, which just looks like a seal. Ooh. And it's watertight. And it's adorable. All, all of these. I think I think Rowlett and Poplio are the are the best looking ones. Litton, honestly, kind of boring to me. Really? If you just, if you, yeah, if you ask my opinion. It looks kind of just plain and Little generic. Little kitten. Fire kitten. Yeah. I feel yeah. like that one's going to have the best third form. Or third evolution, whatever the fuck they I, call I it might. now. I could, I could see that. But Papilio, nothing's ever going to be Squirtle, but Papilio, oh no, little circus seal's got my heart, it's tugging there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fucking cute. You can never go wrong with water types also. It's, that's true. But for some reason, this this appeals to me just for a Pokemon sense, the Rowlet mm-hmm. one, because it's grass and flying. That's true. I like that flying aspect. I think it would really help out with a bunch of stuff. And they're like, Chikorita sucks. <laughs> 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 let's, let's try this grass type again. And, <laughs> Owl, it looks so gosh darn. It looks so gosh darn precious. It does, and it looks and it looks nice from the uh, screenshots of the game. You can kind of see them in the field right there, and it's like it actually looks like you are in a gigantic field. So, uh, I I still haven't played the other newest Pokemon. I think the newest Pokemon game I ever played was uh, Pokemon like Crystal or some shit like that. The one with uh, what, what grade were you Suicune in? on the fucking cover. What grade uh, were you in? Oh fuck! I fifteen, sixteen, maybe. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's what it was. Was it? Oh, man. might be. I don't remember. I think the last game I could think of related to grade school that I played legally had to be oh, like sixth grade. No, maybe fifth. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Jesus, man. It's been a I, while. I think because it came out on the DS, I was like, oh, I'm shit out of luck. <laughs> 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 Didn't get my hands on DS until like mid 2009. Oh man, I see. No, 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 no. Late 2008. Yeah, because I was like, I'm visiting Arizona. I'm not about to fucking play these two games I have on my PSP. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the PSP. Well, now, now, well, now you're on Vita Island, though. No, no one's on Vita yeah, Island. Everyone's on Vita Island. Yeah, they're Welcome like those, to Vita Island. They're like those stupid birds that have their heads in the hole in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's all we do. <laughs> Pop our head up. Oh, this is this is a thing? This is a thing? Oh, 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 new game? Oh, never mind. Oh. <laughs> Back to the hole. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh boy! All right, we'll keep th- keep the Nintendo bandwagon going. So uh, here, you can read a new slogan for Nintendo. They're they're trying to remarket themselves and rebrand themselves. Oh hell no! You got this one. Are you sure? Yes. All right. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Nintendo. There's no play why? Like it. Why? Because I why? am a racist. <laughs> I should have taken it. <laughs> <laughs> I can go. Oh, here. I'll just. I'll just. I'll belittle my people. Okay, hold on. Dude. Hold on. There's no play like it. Oh, but you... there you go. Oh, they're gonna go. Shout Jewish. out to all the rednecks out there. They're gonna go Jewish. Oh, I could do that one too. Oh, gee, there's no play like it. You just you don't. It's actually it just hurts my thumbs a little bit because they change where the A and the B button are, and I just I just can't keep up anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the new PR uh, <laughs> for Nintendo <laughs> builds gold with. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know why you guys are buying this stuff. I mean, you, you're trying, you're trusting yourself in a system that's that's really about five years old it's, now, and you just, you just, hey, Nintendo, I don't know what you're doing you anymore. You should just spend your money on the 2DS. It's seventy ninety nine nine. It's much cheaper. <laughs> it's, made, it's cheaper material. You won't break it as easy. You'll save yourself some money, Bubby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! So, how do you feel about this new slogan? It looks nice. I like I like the the little graphic associated There's with it. No play like it. I think it's supposed. From what I'm reading on the gaffers, I was kind of I wasn't really sure on what they were trying to go. It's supposed to be like. Maybe there's no place like it, mm-hmm. kind of like a, like, oh. a play on that. like like no place like home, mm-hmm. sort of. I didn't really. Play on words. I didn't really get it at first either. They, but yeah, and it looks like they're pimping out. Why is it? It just looks like something for the DS. <laughs> it, it probably is. It, just, it looks like an advertisement more so for the Nintendo DS. I think that's especially exactly. since how big the buttons look. I think that's exactly what it was. Apparently, it's a North American Nintendo 2DS commercial for the new price. So I guess that's 
Seventy nine. I don't really know. It's seventy nine ninety nine. No, that's actually really fucking good. Mm. Holy shit, I would get a two DS for that. But can it play those awesome possum three DS new three DS games? Brand new new three DS games are coming out. Fuck no, it can't. It's gonna look like shit from what I we we've, we've actually heard uh, reports on it too. It's just like uh, I think you know, shout outs to the uh, Beyond podcast. Beyond. Yeah. Um, they uh, they basically said like they were basically talking about the, the PlayStation Neo and they were saying. Uh, who knows how the games are going to run, like the, the uh, games that have a Neo version, how they're going to look on the old on the old PlayStation. And it's like because they, like I guess they found out if you took all the hardware uh, restrictions that Nintendo 3DS has and you just play them on your computer, the games look unbelievable. And he said like characters that you thought were just sprites are actually like full-blown 3D models. Oh, yeah. And it's like, so that's, you know, that's the one thing I would mm. maybe want to get a 3DS for, but... You know, I don't really give a shit. I, I as long as the game's fun, I, I really couldn't care, and it runs well, and the frame rate isn't garbage, and fine, I'm cool. But remember, there's no play like it. There is no play like <laughs> it. No play like hole. It's not gonna stick, but hey, you guys tried. Hey, Hi, Tiger. Hi. Why? Why do? Why do you? It's every time we talk about Nintendo. Hey, it really Tiger is. hates it. Dude, I think it's, I hey, think it's an omen. Tiger. Guess what? Nintendo has E3 news. His ears perked up. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> 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 All right, so this is not really gigantic news since we've been talking about this for almost forever. But Nintendo announced June 17th or the 16th that their treehouse that they use to present during E3 when they're not there is going to be the Nintendo Treehouse Live. So you can imagine this as a more so of a substitute for them not doing a press conference and more of them having a gigantic space rented out at E3 where people can play playable demos of the new Legend of Zelda game. Ooh. Which is not slated as uh, Zelda Wii U on the website. But for now, people refer to it as Zelda Wii U, just for a placeholder. Yeah, it's Zelda NX. No, don't, get, don't get it twisted, everybody. It's Zelda NX. If you buy it for Zelda, if you buy Zelda, the new Zelda for Wii U, when it comes out in 2017, when the NX is probably going to come out like six months later, that's going to fall. Oh, God. Um, March 2017? Yeah. No, you like, no. You're, mm-mm. just wait. Just wait for March. Just wait. Like, just, honestly, if you have a, if you have a Wii U, just don't buy games for it. Just don't. Just don't. Just wait. I sold mine. You sold yours? I'm about to. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I'm not going to sell the the GameCube remote and probably get that souped up with all this customized cool stuff you can do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're nerds. But um, I, do I don't know. Do that. I That's still the only game I have on the Wii U. Especially since we can legally and non-legally play games on the computer. And all they have is virtual console stuff, which is really people are playing. Mm-hmm. Like, why do I need the Wii U for that when I can still use my Nintendo Wii to play most of the games I'll spend my time playing on the Wii U? Yep. And you can actually play those old games on a GameCube controller. Yeah. As opposed to the Wii U, you can only play Smash with, for the Wii U with the GameCube controller. You literally can just plug that shit into the Wii. That was one of the coolest things about it. They had a GameCube port thing so that you could just... Do that. You could just plug mm-hmm. in your GameCube shit right there. And you could play games that weren't GameCube compatible on a GameCube controller. Because honestly, GameCube controller is probably one of their most well di- well designed controllers they've ever made. Yeah. Besides their older ones like the NES and the, and the SNES. Oh, SNES controller. Oh, dude, that was the best. It was game. flat, but not too flat. Yep. <laughs> it and was, it was like light. The, it was like the perfect pancake. It was light and it was durable. You could throw, mm-hmm. you could chuck that shit against the wall. It probably would not break. We've well, seen some people throw that shit against the wall during streams. Yes. Kale. Oh yeah, fucking kale. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. It just happened one too many times and it finally broke. What can <laughs> I say? Uh, I also saw. I actually did see a video of somebody who rage quit during a uh, during a Smash tournament and then they they literally broke their controller in half yeesh the gamecube controller yeah damn and he tried to yeah it's it, like breaking your skull <laughs> right yeah like he he when he just ripped it like he didn't just throw it like he just like god like he just fucking hooked that shit what like the fuck? fucking phone book yeah i heard someone doing that bernie burns with the xbox remote oh god the xbox yeah the original xbox remote <laughs> that thing's a fucking walking tank for yeah. a controller he accidentally like bumped the little the, one or the big one the big one yeah, when they were filming Red vs. Blue in the early oh, days, fuck. Uh, someone accidentally bumped the camera where the character models were in place <laughs> after hours and hours of filming, and he was like, God damn it! Just crush in the middle of his hands. And he just picked up another one and went back to filming. 
<laughs> oh my god! Remind me to never pick a fight with Bernie Burns That's ever. Like a, just brute strength. Jesus Christ! That's old man strength. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. He, he, it's, yeah. Oh no, yeah. That's a, that's a level some wish to achieve, but old, old you must strength. wait years to master. <laughs> <laughs> you must sit on the couch and drink beer every day, and all of a sudden you will gain the strength and play video games. <laughs> and my my dad my dad has old man strength, but it's funny he's increased. He had like natural old man strength, but now he's like. He works out all the time. Mm. Straight up, my dad's fucking ripped. Oh, it's dude, it's scary. My dad is is a terrifying human being to work. Like you watch him work out, and you're like, all right, you could you could beat up lots of people in this gym. So now it's like permanent. It's not old man strength naturally gained. It's multiplied old man strength. <laughs> He's super saying old man. Yeah, dude, it's ridiculous. You seriously like you watch him, you're just like, all right, I won't. But like my dad, I think he what is it? I think he. Deadlifted, I want to say something over 300 pounds. No. Yep. See? No. Isn't that fucking scary? That's terrifying. No, thank you. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> like, he did two reps of it, and he's like, ah, whatever. And he gets, he still gets mad at himself about, like, that was just doing a, it. That was just a warm-up. Yeah. No big deal. <sighs> well, he gets mad. He's like, oh, I didn't do the form right. And it's like, oh, yeah. the fuck? Whatever. Gotta you're the form. <laughs> you're almost like football player status, so shut the hell up. You're fine. <laughs> Jesus Be Christ. Be satisfied, damn it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my dad, well, I mean, I have to admire him. He's never... He's never entirely satisfied, but sometimes it's to a detriment. Mm, especially but, that can be especially bad for weightlifting. Yes, people really they try to push themselves, and you never know what the product you're going to get. Yeah, you don't know. Luckily, he doesn't push himself too much, but he's just he just wishes he could do more. But then we have to tell him uh, you're 57, mm-hmm. and the fact that you're even doing this at your weight is like beyond F- ridiculous. Phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. Phenomenal. As Vince Vaughn would say. What am I looking at over there? Uh, I have oh. no, I have no segue for this. We're just gonna go. Uh, so, sorry, boys and girls. Sorry, lads and lasses. Yeah, we so be creative all the time. There's a new announcement from I think still coming from May the fourth. Star Wars Battlefront two. Boo. And expected to come out 2017. Boo. Why boo? Because fuck you, EA. <laughs> I was like, what? I didn't do anything. <laughs> no, not you. Not you. You're fine. I'm running EA. <laughs> uh, yeah, here, just you. you just, I don't want to get mad. You, you go first. So no, there's, you, there's nothing much to, uh, to really say. I think it was announced during a conference call. A lot of investor calls happening this week, mm-hmm. and nearly towards the end of this month, heading into E3, and they announced that we're going to get a new Star Wars game every year. Yep, for the next three years, mm, three to four years, three yeah, to four years, so, yeah, yeah. And we got, as you heard in the last week's podcast, Respawn is doing a third person action style uh, Star Wars game after the. <laughs> Something which we'll talk about a little later is released. And then there's more confirmed projects so far, like four or five confirmed projects. Ugh. And to hear that Battlefront 2 is going to be updated, it is, uh, it's a head scratcher. Rather than release free DLC for the movies that are coming out, keep it fresh as long as you can, at least until 2018, I figured. Yeah, you would think. Because I feel like that's just such an easier method to do things rather than... Well, just make an entirely new game. Because it's like, if you're going to make an entirely new game after this game's been out for, what, a year? Yeah. My God, man. Like, you're giving people, like, you're making people feel like they wasted their money, for sure. January, February, uh, December, January, February, March, April. Yeah, six months. God fucking damn it. Yeah, that's way too soon. That's That's way too soon. We're analyzing uh, Battlefront. (sighs) Yeah. I, will, I want to say annualized, but they're analyzing Battlefront. They're analyzing. <laughs> but hey, this is what we want. No? Everyone's getting butt fucked. We wanted Battlefront to come back, but this is how it had to come back. If EA is going to make money, it's going to have to be a million seller. If you want it to be a million seller, Tiger, look at me. You got to annualize it because that's how shooters make money. Thankfully, Blizzard's not following that formula. <laughs> yeah, God. But it's that's the thing, though, is that we, we kind of talked about this before, and we've talked about it off off the podcast and everything, it seems that the that history is starting to repeat itself as far as like mm-hmm. game models and business models are going. Where it's like, okay, here here we're doing this one thing where now we can release something annually and people will buy it. Now people are seeing the the how bad that is. Like you see Assassin's Creed, you see COD. Like we've talked, COD has now well, that's another basically piece of news. Battlefield's trailer video has like one of the best rated videos of of their entire career and call of duty had one of their worst Mm. and battlefield isn't coming out annually yeah they came out with hardline pretty soon after battlefield 3 or whatever but it 
But that was more of like a just cops and robbers segue. Nobody really considered that a real Battlefield yeah, game. It was like a spinoff. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it just it's weird that now it, it I don't think the annualization of of first person shooters is a smart way to go if you're EA, especially Star Wars, where it's such a vulnerable market where they're so timid about what could happen in multiple facets, not just video games, because we've all had our hearts broken with video games, but just the movies as well. And so now it's finally like there's hope coming back. Video of New Hope. Oh, sorry. <laughs> God damn it. Giggity. Uh, <laughs> um, so the, the movie was amazing. Like, why would you not expand on that in, the ga- in like, battle, Battlefront 1? Like, the fact you're making a Battlefront 2, as I said, it just feels like everyone wasted their money, especially from when Battlefront came out and people saw, okay, there's some fun aspects to it. But it, it does get stale. It's interesting you say that also because there are a lot of people feeling that they did waste their money. Yeah. That, that purchased the game a few weeks ago. It went on sale for about 40 bucks, mm-hmm. maybe 30 bucks on Amazon. And now they're kind of like, oh, well, it looks like I <laughs> dropped the gun a little bit on this. I should have waited until the fall for a game that's going to come out. There's going to be another Star Wars game coming out this fall. Yep. Since they've already said it straight up. That's going to be the plan. And I want to go back to the the YouTube, YouTube hates Call of Duty and <laughs> likes Battlefield thing. Yes, this comes from Paul Tassia from Forbes, mm-hmm. where he mentions last week Call of Duty Infinite Warfare's reveal trailer was the most disliked video game trailer of all time, Yeesh. with three hundred thousand dislikes and the eighth most disliked video period in YouTube history, with the frankly unbelievable one point two million dislikes. Ooh. And if we go over to the other side with Battlefield. This game has now passed a million likes, putting it in the top 250 most liked videos ever, making it, by far, the most liked trailer of all time across movies, TV, or video games. Wow. Hmm. There's something There's something to be said about that. Yeah. There's, there's just... I, I think part of it is the annualization, and they also saw... From what I've heard from COD fans, and I listened to a, a podcast about... Uh, caught in, in infinite warfare and and it's it seems that they're not really di- like divulging from anything they did from last year like it seems like it's the same model and we talked about this on last week's podcast the battlefield creator basically just called out the graphics and said this shit is garbage <laughs> shit so, was crazy yeah that was terrible <laughs> no, nuts. It's, so it's it's obvious that there's definitely a rivalry and battlefield is so confident in their business model that they are they can tweet out something like that People still give them crap and then come out with a trailer just days after the fact. You know where I think the dislikes came from? Mm-hmm. The Modern Warfare stuff. That oh. right at the end. I bet people were like, not liking this. Just give me my Modern Warfare remastered. Oof. Just give me it. Because a lot of people are still talking about that. That's terrible. Um, that's kind of the hullabaloo. Hullabaloo? Mm-hmm. It's a gibberish word. It's fine. Uh, On like Twitter, even still, people were talking about Modern Warfare more than Infinite Warfare. Yeah. That's not a, that's not a sign of, of like good things if you're for, if you're COD if you're an, a COD fan you should be concerned mm-hmm. like that's that's bad that's bad that you're everyone's harping back on an old game that did it right rather than it's like all right I don't want to play like if COD fans are saying I don't want to play the same old COD again you've got a fucking problem because every game has been nearly exactly the same except for very minor details and I hate the fact that it's called COD because it's two letters away from a word I don't want to say because it won't make sense what what cock <laughs> <laughs> But this, uh, this goes on to the topic as well of what they're trying to do. They try uh-huh. to keep it fresh. Uh, when I, <laughs> I, there's so many games I lose track of this shit. All right, so what was the last one? Black Ops Three? I think so. Or was no? Uh, was it? God damn it! Imp, not Infinite Warfare. God, that's the one that just came out. Advanced Warfare. Okay, so the, the one and, with Kevin Spacey, and then the one before that was Blops Three. Yes. Okay. I think, and then there was uh, those Ghost, were those were Ghost Two. And those also? were in the distant future. Uh, yes. And so this one's in the future. Yes, where you would go into space. Okay. All right. So this is future warfare once again, pretty much. So yeah, they, so they spent the last two, three years in future warfare. Yep. So Titanfall 2 got a release date today. <laughs> uh-huh. And not so much a release date, but everyone kind of has a feeling about when it might come out. Mm-hmm. Usually uh, they said near the end of the third quarter, so end of October, somewhere around the middle of December also. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. This is an issue for Call of Duty. Not only are they getting kicked in the high knee from Battlefield 1, mm-hmm. their uh, EA is dipping their toes into the future warfare genre as well. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about this. How do you feel about EA 
dropping two games around the same time. Both of them shooters. <laughs> it's like they're making money, but it's like you're splitting. You're kind of like splitting up your fan base, mm-hmm. and it's like you're going to automatically. There, people are going to automatically compare the games because yeah. I feel like they're going to automatically buy this game and go, "This game's better than this game," and they'll compare because it's the same. It's the same developer. Like EA is still behind it on both games. They're gonna, like I said, they're going to compare it, and somebody's something's got to give. One game is going to outsell the other, mm-hmm. and either way, that's going to reflect on them in some negative way. And that's the and that's the problem. Like it should be, what they're thinking is going to be a win win. We're making money. People are going to buy both games, and mm-hmm. both games could be outstanding, and even could be one could be just as good as the other. But just you're just going to create a separation. You're just automatically doing that by releasing two games from the same from the same people. Like it's just that's just what is going to happen. I don't find it a good business model. But as, as to your point with COD, even with EA doing something that I feel isn't the best, mm-hmm. they're still going to completely whoop COD's ass up and yeah. down the block. And it looks like they're going to get money from both directions. It looks like they can afford to do this right now. Mm-hmm. As compared to other companies, I like, really want to focus on one, the one genre and one game, whatever IP it is. Mm-hmm. Usually, especially in the winter time when they're trying to push consoles and games at the same time. Yes. But now EA is like, huh, we can kind of afford to lose a little money here because we're still going to be getting some money from the game about World War One. Yes. Because it looks like maybe they looked at the numbers. It looks like the numbers were dropping from normal battlefield as compared to like futuristic warfare games hmm. and so like fuck it drop <laughs> just release both of them at the same time we'll get money from both directions uh-huh. head into the springtime with a different game coming out and hopefully it'll pan out evenly well it's like, it's like basically a backup plan just in case mm-hmm. i mean that's good now don't put your eggs all in one basket at the same yeah. time it's yeah. just it's just very weird for the for the, for the consumer yeah, it's odd yeah. this is i have not seen much like this at all besides mm-hmm. like I don't know, Square Enix and Deus Ex, but shit, that was a action-y adventure game, and they could have an RPG come out at the same time. You would, you would not know at all that was Square Enix that like developed or published those two games. Yeah, I would not have known that it was Deus Ex. Um, but, but yeah, exa- exactly. You're it, it's you're allowed to dip your toes in two different genres if you're mm. the same if you're, if you're the same person. Like that's fine. But if you dip your toes in the same genre and you're releasing two games yeah. that are basically like kind of the, not it's the same, but it's you know, it's a first person shooter. It's like, uh, you're just, you're basically, you're putting your faith in one genre and one type of consumer and community. And it's just going to be split. It yeah. is. Even if they both, even if they make money, which I'm sure they will, it's mm-hmm. just going to be split. That's, That's interesting. All. They're going to have a subdivision mm-hmm. within their games. It's going to be a little weird. And, but call me Andrew Wilson. Okay. Andrew Wilson. What's up? Hi, nice to meet you. I'm uh, Andrew Wilson hi. from EA. Wow. Awesome. Andrew Wilson. Good you're here. Now, I know you guys have some doubts. Wow. You smoked <laughs> a lot of cigarettes, Andrew. <laughs> Holy shit. That was quick. <laughs> My God. I know you guys have some doubts about us releasing two games around the same time. He says, mm-hmm. but I believe the giant category that the games belongs in right now is big enough with an audience diverse enough that it will support the two games at once. The games both scratch different itches, yeah. he says. There's a very broad and diverse set of players who play games in that category who are mm-hmm. looking for to fulfill a different game and play <laughs> motivations, he said. Transcript, transcript from Via Seeking Alpha. Whatever. Mm. So it looks like in a what's the word I'm looking for? In a very fuckery kind of way, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Wilson kind of tiptoed around the question of whether this is a good idea or not, mm. and pretty much smiled and said, "Yes, it is." Mm. But at the same time, I feel like he understands that this is kind of a risk, and. You can't really be too scared going into it. And he understands that the audience is split up. My God, what was that? I can uh, talk about that later. It's fine. I'll, it'll, be, it'll be one of our funny fucking things. But it is, it's odd that this is coming out. Uh, but in a small amount of time, because Timefall came out in 2014. Yep, two years ago. And then we were expecting another EA game to come out around the, the winter time. Mm-hmm. Which one was that one? Uh, was it Andromeda? Yep. Yep. You know, so that, oh, that too. Yeah, that drama. The people are still the pieces are falling into the puzzle. People. Well, so are the, are they releasing two games at once to quell anybody's need for Andromeda? Is Nintendo pushing back the NX so they can fuck up this fiscal year? Also, <laughs> I feel like finally understanding these quarters that these companies go through. Mm-hmm. 
is they're really trying to push up the sales at certain points it's just spike it up so they can go into the next set, uh, quarter like not fresh but clean yeah with at least, their next, at least not in the red mm-hmm, with the next plan in motion already yeah so nx is using this year and x nintendo mm-hmm. is using this year just to it's a, a farewell tour with their wii u and they're slowly changing the brand bit by bit. So by the time the fiscal year starts again for them by next March, mm-hmm. and it's going to be NX everything. Yep, as so, it should be. Mm-hmm. They should completely just push themselves away from the Wii U entirely. So I think EA going into the end of December, early January, we're going to start seeing some. I mean, actually, probably as early as June, we're going to see everything for Titanfall Two, mm-hmm. Battlefield, Battlefront. Ugh, this is going to be a Star Wars segment probably, mm-hmm. and then a little teaser for Andromeda, and then the Gaming Awards starring my boy Jeff Keighley. Ah. We'll see probably a Mass Effect Andromeda full on trailer. Oh Jesus! Well, speaking of Jeff Keighley, we can go straight into uh, into his leaks for uh, Kojima's new game. Mm-hmm. Yay! 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 Well, I don't know. Maybe yay. Um, <laughs> the latest issue of Weekly Famitsu is an interview with Kojima Productions boss Hideo Kojima. Uh, so let's see. Let's see. There's basically a few questions I asked him. Did you not want to take a break after leaving Konami? He said, I wanted to take some time off, but if I did that, my life's tempo would go out of whack and no one could forgive me. I'll need about a year to warm up. We're currently in the temporary office and have made only a logo and a web page. Regarding the logo, can't say anything yet, but there is a secret. It has a very cool body and we have plans to turn it into a figure. Of course I do. Uh, it's making his first title with Sony. I always came in from all over the world, but these places use a Hollywood system, and I don't like doing detailed presentations. From there, I wondered who, who would put their faith in me. It was just a rough concept, and SIE was who I was looking for. Uh, we got quite a lot of freedom, and they're really easy to work with. Regarding the new game, it's an amazing new game. We're thinking about everything all at once, including the plot, characters, and game systems. Since certain parts are fairly new, we cannot help but experiment. Well, not to say that it's open world, users who enjoy today's AAA games, The Division and Uncharted, etc., will be able to easily enjoy it. When it is announced, you might think, that's not that outstanding, but you'll understand when you see it and play it. The genre is action. Okay? So it is. sounds like it's going to be kind of more along Uncharted. Mm-hmm. Uh, regarding virtual reality, I want to make something with VR, but right now we don't have anyone. I think VR holds the key to game development. Mm-hmm. That's pretty big. And then... And then uh, the artist. Yeah, this is a VR gave me a feeling I was very close to playing Famicom around the time I was a kid. I also I absolutely believe that a new world is being born. All right. So th- and then uh, so Jeff Keighley also had some tweets too, right? Didn't mm-hmm. you, didn't you have those? He was he was being very he was saying that basically Kojima is the second coming of Jesus, but whatever. <laughs> At least that's what it felt like. And um, regarding the new game, pretty much from this interview, I like the little tidbits of uh, fucking notes. Da, 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 da. Basically talking about it's going to be not stealth at all. Mm-hmm. And also, he still hasn't mentioned what the helmet stands for, <laughs> bastard. Yeah, he has no idea. It looks it looks like some type of fucked up microscope mm-hmm. to me, to be honest. Yeah, and I like how he also said that it's going to grab the interest of users of that enjoy today's AAA games like The Division, Uncharted, mm-hmm. and they'll be able to easily enjoy it. And when it's announced, you might not think it's outstanding. Uh, it's going to be something that is not as complicated as Metal Gear. I don't think he's going to dive into that yet. <laughs> So I think we're going to see, uh, I think he said he wanted to do something sci-fi-like as well. So hopefully like a sci-fi action-adventure game. That would be pretty cool. That's something I'm hoping for. I'd be okay with sci-fi stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why not? I, I trust Kojima. I trust Kojima's, not not in completely implicitly, not just like whatever, uh, based on Metal Gear 5. I have, like, what? I do, I'm petting you, bro. What is wrong with you? Uh, All right. Uh, I... I yeah, I, I think he's going to make a damn good game, and I think him having the freedom to... It'll be kind of like the Clippers. It's just like him having the freedom to do what he wants and with with nothing really hindering his progress that's like really, really blatant, mm-hmm. I think he's going to make some really good stuff. Mm-hmm. Especially under Sony, where they're going to give him full power. Absolutely. That's what he all said. All the resources so that he needs. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, they'll be just fine up there. Um, all right, so what we got, what we got next? Oh, Lion... Oh, God. All right, yeah, Peter you hear, Molyneux you this one. and Lionhead Studios. Yeah, as you heard, I believe in the beginning of April, Lionhead Studios shut down for reasons that everyone assumes because they're not making anything right now. Their on rail fable game was not horrible, and they did plan a free for all four player fable game as well called Fable Legends. Mm-hmm. But right now, the rumor going around the grapevine. Is that Lionhead shut down because Microsoft just simply didn't want to sell the IP. They didn't want to sell Fable to lots of people that were willing to buy it and help 
make a new Fable game, but Microsoft just didn't see any money in it. That's so... I don't understand. And this goes along with the other mass shutdowns that Microsoft were doing with mm-hmm. their other studios as well. So they can just... Uh, bullshit. <laughs> and act like they have no reason to make a game that people deserve and that people actually want. Yes. And that can be at the forefront of the E3 presentation that can be another mascot for the Xbox 1.5 because that's what I liked about the original Microsoft Xbox is that the Fable was presented as a fantasy game that people could take a break from Halo from to get into. Mm-hmm. Right now, I don't think people have anything else to really get into with the Xbox One not besides really. Tomb Raider. Mm-mm. There's not really much. And now the Titanfall, is, like Titanfall 2 is not going to be Xbox One exclusive. That's going to be to all the systems. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, you're... you're your Xbox, I don't really know, or your Microsoft, I don't really know what you're doing right now. Like you're, like now that this rumor, this is a rumor, but but if this is confirmed and people and people are basically getting fired because you decided to be a cheapskate, mm. that's not gonna come off well with people. And especially as you said, this is a game that people have like loved. This is a, this is a franchise that people really really love. And yeah, maybe the the, the Connect Fable game was not great, but Fable <laughs> Legends was supposed to be big, horrible, game. and it's just like it's so terrible. That it, this that they've suffered that these people are getting fired because Microsoft have decided to be stingy. It's mm-hmm. so shitty. They could have let those people develop this game and have their jobs and not worry about it. I was some other studio that would have taken them seriously, and it's just like now because you don't like it, you're making these people suffer. That's pretty. That's just terrible to me. That's terrible. I, I don't. I don't like it, and and especially as you said, there's a lot, there's a lot of layoffs going on uh, lately with a lot of studios. That were beloved. I mean, we right off the top, we talked about. Oh wait, we haven't. Even, have we talked about Disney Infinity yet? Have we? No, nope, not yet. Yeah, so we'll get into that. Um, it's it's just it's just bad. It's this is bad. From I mean, if you close a studio down because it's not making you money and it's it's something you can't keep around anymore and it's costing you more money than it is than it is making you. Yeah, I get it. Close it down. This was not one of those situations. It was might be costing you money. To not pay attention to them, mm. but it was it wouldn't have cost you any money to just shell out that IP to somebody else. There was nothing wrong with that, but you decided to be an ass, Microsoft, so fuck you. Without ownership of the IP, any company that bought Lionhead would have to publish new Fable games, or Fable Legends if it had been salvaged, under a licensing, a licensing agreement with Microsoft. Not a favorable condition for anyone looking to make money from the franchise. So it looks like... You would have to go through a few loops in jungle gyms if you're going to make a new Fable game. Mm-hmm. It looks like you have to pay some licensing fees to even attempt to make a new Fable game. Like if we made, if Bad Inputs made a, a gaming developing company called like Bad Inputs Games, big. Mm-hmm. That's actually pretty uh, cool. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> big games. Uh, we would have to pay out the ass just to give what the fans want. Because it's still owned by Microsoft. So yes. my, I think Microsoft saw that. They're like, well, no one's going to do this. So I guess we might as well just shut it down. Mm-hmm. And it's like, geez, licensing sucks. Licensing's so, a freaking bitch. So maybe, hopefully, I'm really hoping that the hippy dippy that I am, Microsoft was looking for buyers, anyone that could afford to do it. But I don't think anyone can right now. Mm hmm. Especially with what all EA is trying to do, all the big spenders, <laughs> they're pulling, they're spending money right now to not be at E3. The most important people. <laughs> Ain't so, that the truth? That's funny. Hopefully, later down the line, we'll get another Fable game. But this sucks. I hate. I always hate seeing studios shut down. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they'll do some Kickstarter off the side and, and make some Fable game that's huge. And who, who knows? Who, who knows at this point? But we'll see. Mm. And speaking <sighs> of studios shutting down, Disney is losing money. <laughs> that's crazy to think about. Yep. In, wow. In wake of their money loss, they had to cut some ties. To save some money with that budget. And that ties was with Disney Infinity and just overall game development under the Disney brand. Oh, man. That's that's terrible. You you know, you really wouldn't think Disney, of all people, would be losing money. But, I mean, not even them could be perfect. So, they, I guess, what did they say? They're, they're not even going to make – they're not even going to develop games anymore. They're just – they're going to purely focus on publishing. Yeah. So, they're just going to they're gonna you know give their stuff to other developers and then they're just going to be like, we're going to put our stamp on it. And that's about it. That's mm-hmm. all that's going to be happening. Thank God – Lots of developers reached out, such as Blizzard as well, and and anyone else that can help lend a hand. This is reported by Eddie Makuch. Mm -hmm. No. This is Eddie Mackich. Eddie Mackich. 
Thank God. From Thank Gangsta God you corrected Gangsta. that. <laughs> Eddie McCooch. <laughs> Disney Infinity discontinued. Developer shuttered. Is that a... Disney Infinity can d- discontinue. Developer shuttered with nearly 300 jobs lost. Shuttered? What, shutter like S- yeah, S- yes. S-H-U-D-D-E-R-E-D? Oh, shutter. Wait. Wait, wait. Hold on. One more time. Right? I feel Dis- like it's the, like the way yeah. it's... Oh, one more time. Disney it. Infinity discontinued. Developer shuttered. Near th- nearly 300 jobs lost. I don't... That feels... It, I'm sure... It feels wrong. It, right? All right, but I'll continue. Hold on. I'm going to look up the word shuttered. So Disney's Toy to Life game... Oh, it's close of business. Disney Infinity is no more. The yeah. media giant announced today that its earnings report has discontinued its entire self-publishing console game business. As part of this, the House of Mouse is incurring a $147 million char- a charge. Uh, oh, that's right. They're incurring a $147 million charge. That's... Fucking awful. Ooh, the big boys. Ben Fritz of the Wall Street Journal. Ooh, la di da da da. Puts it. This is the end of Disney as video game publisher. Mm-hmm. I and I don't blame him. I, it's. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can only do so much. Yeah, if you're not if you're not making a profit from this stuff, and even as I said, Disney Infinity apparently has is is extremely popular yeah. according to. Uh, IGN, yeah, according to them, but yeah. obviously it's not selling well. People might like the game, but it seems like whoever bought the game at first and is still keeping on, it doesn't seem like it's reached out to new audiences with every, you know, two point oh, three point oh, four point oh. Like it doesn't, it just is not, it's not appealing to a wider audience. Yeah, the, it's not, it's not attracting new consumers. It's just kind of staying with the ones that have been there. The taste is there for those who like it, but it's just not sticking for those who stay, it feels. Exactly. And they announced two more play sets based on Alice Look Through the Looking Glass <laughs> and Finding Dory, which are coming out in June. Yay. However, late in March, Disney Interactive pulled out of E3 2016, but did not explain why. Now we know. So this, we, this is happening for a little while. Gosh, that's freaking terrible. And, of course, a published statement on the shutdown on the game's website from Disney Infinity SVP John Blackburn. He posted, by now you may have heard the news that the difficult decision to discontinue production of Disney Infinity. From the beginning, Disney Infinity was built for you, our fans. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for not just being the support over the years, but for creating a community that made Disney Infinity more than just a game. Our hearts with you guys. And of course, like I mentioned before, lots of studios reached out to them yesterday, showing job openings for developments, even right. little ones, big ones, because everyone is working together in this wacky, wacky world that is the game industry. You, yeah, you got it. You got to stick together, man. It's not it is a rough, rough business out there. And I, I applaud all the people that are uh, that are trying to get their jobs back and are trying are still trying to make what they want to make as far as their creative freedom goes and. And unfortunately, business is business. Mm. Oy, oy, oy. All right, let's move on to some happy news. All right, so move. the final bit of news, oh my God, mm-hmm. is uh, the Xbox One Fallout 4 beta is going to happen soon. Ooh, for Matt. You guys think it's a regular beta? No, 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 no. These are these eyes. <laughs> these eyes, these eyes, never seen nobody else before you. <laughs> Fucking it. All right, so. <laughs> no, just keep going. We're just ending the podcast like that. I just that. can't even remember. All right, so, like they announced last year, once again, can't believe a year has flown by already. The Xbox One and the PS4 will receive console mods for Fallout 4. And the mods are going to start rolling out in June. But the beta for the mods begin for the Xbox One, and you can sign up for that today. You register through here, which is pretty much BethesdaGameStudios.com. <laughs> if you're interested, go ahead and sign on up. And the next bit of DLC that's coming out is, of course, Far Harbor on May 19th. Oh, then that looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we talked about that in the last podcast. It's just, again, Fallout, Fallout just continuing to nail it. Good job, Bethesda. You did. A, you made possibly one of the most well-liked games ever. We're getting mods, baby, on the console. It's fucking awesome. So just so good. So, so good. Uh, and what we got next? Oh, we got the new releases up. All right. Or so, should we see that Civ 6 trailer? I mean, we've already seen it. Yes. But for those who have not seen it, you should take uh, three minutes out of your day and watch it. Take a gander. Take a gander at that. So this is, uh, it, it was a really, really well-made trailer. And from what I am understanding, I think we already all knew this from before when people were saying Civ was going to, new Civ was probably going to come out, is a uh, space. You're going to go into space. It's going to be you be able to go land on the moon, maybe different planets. Who knows? The Richard Branson of the Civilization Universe? Yes, the Richard Branson. Yes. Too. Fucking amazing. You can, you can be Neil, Neil Armsken. Yeah, but it never happened. 
It didn't happen. It's all an act. That's it was all the, green screen. Yeah, you can recreate the acting where you can go to a point where you make a great Hollywood studio and then recreate it in the so 70s. You, you can recreate when they were shooting the moon landing and all of a sudden someone walked in that wasn't supposed to be there and the gunshot <laughs> <laughs> that rang over his head as he ran out the building. Gandhi like, walks I've in. I've seen everything. I've seen too much. <laughs> 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 I'm sick of it. I'm sick of all this. Lies. We Gan- never went to the moon. Gandhi walks in and he's like 512 years old and then he <laughs> shoots up the place. Oh, God. That'll be great. Uh, so apparently, so we, we got some details for you, else. Uh, so it says expansive empires. You're going to expect see the marvels of your empire spread across the map like never before. Marvels. Each city spans multiple tiles. Multiple. You can custom build your cities. Take full advantage of the local terrain. All right, nothing new there. Baby boomers. Ba- what? Active research unlocks boosts and speed your civilization's progress through history. To advance more quickly, use your units to actively explore, develop your environment, and discover new cultures. Dynamic diplomacy. You know, going alliteration there. Uh, interactions with other civilizations change over the course of the game. From Make gay Nazis. Interactions to where conflict is a fact of life. In the late game alliances and, and negotiations. Yes, neo-Nazis will no, be I said, available. I said gay Nazis. Ne- gay Nazis. Yeah, that's, gay can... black Jewish Nazis will all be there. <laughs> hey, anything's possible with baby yes. boomers. That's the baby, baby boomer, gay, black Nazis. Oh, what else can we? Can, are they aliens too? And they're all called Kobe. <laughs> Kobe one, Kobe two, Kobe A, Kobe B, Kobe Beef, uh, and Kobe C. Combined arms, expanding on the one unit per tile design. Support units can now be embedded with other units, like anti tank support with infantry or a warrior with settlers. Similar units can be combined to perform powerful corpse units. Uh, enhanced multiplayer. In addition to traditional multiplayer modes, co- cooperate and compete with your friends in a wide variety of situations, all designed to be easily completed in a single session, which is seven hours. A Civ for all players. Civ 6 provides veteran players new ways to build and tune their civilization for the greatest chance of success. And new tutorial systems introduce new players to the underlying concepts so they can easily get started. Sounds like you're saying 6-6. Six, six. Yep. 6-6-6, six, 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 baby. No, Civ 6. No, 6-6. Six, six, Civ 6-6. Six, six. No, oh, God, what Civ is this? Six, six. Oh, this is odd future. Civ 6 is sick. <laughs> Civ 6 is sick. I'm sure Sid Meier would love that as a time. <laughs> it's a branding for his game. <laughs> sick, bruh. Civ 6 is sick. Fucking 666, six, six, dude. We're going to put, put fucking Atlas with crosses on his fucking eyes and kitty ears. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is there anything else uh, on the news front? Uh, well, so we got more game releases. Uh, so Civ Six is probably the, could be the biggest one. Um, but Uncharted has also come out, so people are obviously going to be enjoying that. I think I saw some for the esports thing that someone's oh, getting get fired. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. So before we go into the real game releases, so here you can get get on this, Tokes. So this the full last year, just in context, esports has been picking up speed, not only in context of League of Legends, but everything, mm-hmm. all facets of it. TBS, the local channel in the United States, I believe in other areas as well. Mm-hmm. They're starting to have their own esports show. Mm-hmm. Uh, CW in a local channel here, they had an esports show. I think it was Mortal Kombat, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then our esports organizer said by the end of 2016, one billion people will know what esports is. So, wow. Unfortunately, it looks like a plan was leaked from a conferences. Uh, conferences. From a, actually, yeah, from a conference regarding World Esports. Mm-hmm. And the World Esports Association seems to confirm the existence of a major new esports body. Then an image that looks like a flag from all the different esports teams around the world. Mm-hmm. It was leaked. And the guy said, who leaked it, look what I printed at work today. <laughs> End quote. So expect some news about that. Hopefully, in the coming months, esports is blowing up huge. Oh, someone's getting fired. Apparently, yeah, we're getting a real association, baby. Yeah, thank God. I mean, I'm glad it's going to get recognized, and hopefully, that petition gets signed to have esports be recognized as a real sport. And based on that, if esports is going to be known by one seventh of the population, mm-hmm. God damn, it better be fucking known. Yeah. It better be considered a freaking okay. sport. Um, Just see, it doesn't help that only certain esports games. Have the the visa classifications for someone to fly out since they're real esports games. Uh, right now, a, a player named Leffen that plays Super Smash Brothers Melee, mm-hmm. he had trouble maintaining a visa to stay in the states or even come to the states to mm-hmm. compete. Yep. So luckily, he's allowed to be in the states until the end of June, I believe. So he's still going to miss some majors that can happen in July and August, which mm-hmm. is usually when it happens in the summertime in the U.S. 
So we're, we're working on that right now. There's a petition going around. I'll post it in the description for this so you can get your hands on. Yeah, go sign that. And read up on it because mm-hmm. it's, it's unfair. <laughs> it's just video games. It's nothing dangerous. It is. Nothing but, harmful. But it's, hey, man, and it is real. I've, I actually I, – so I showed, uh, I showed my stepdad – uh, some melee videos. I showed him how fast is melee, mm-hmm. so I could like kind of show show him like, hey, if you don't think, I, I mean, he never said it wasn't a real sport. I wasn't like trying to prove him wrong, but he was interested. So I was like, yeah. here's some proof, and here's like why people are trying to consider this a real sport. Look how fast this crap is. Yeah. Look how technical <laughs> this crap is. Look and, how speedy this shit is. It, this is the reason why they get injuries. Exactly. Yeah. That that's that was an article that uh, well, I think Red Bull posted right. They, mm-hmm. So they talked about esports injuries and. And we've discussed this. You have to control. If you play Fox in Melee, who is the best character, the reason he's the best is because he's so fast. And you have to be. It's so goddamn technical, precise, and fast. It is mm-hmm. something that basically our hands really aren't designed to do. They're really not. Like in terms of evolution, they're not designed. To, our thumbs are not supposed to move that fast in a short period of time. They're just nope. not. Especially for like hours at a time. Exactly. <laughs> a tournament can last anywhere from 10 a.m. and will end at 1 a.m. Yeah, that's insane. And they have to, yeah, it's so much preparation. You have to make sure you get all your meals in order. You have to get ample rest for your thumbs. And still don't rest your thumbs too much so you can play friendlies and warm up for your next match. Right. So it's like, that's, that's just, it's bad. It's bad. And you, they need to be supported in more ways than one. And these people literally, like, that's their career. We're talking about Leffen. That, that's his career. Like, that's how he makes money. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's no other way around that. And if, and if it's not recognized as a real sport, then this guy's going to go, Months and months and months without a visa and without a viable source of income, and that's just that's just unfair. Especially for melee, right now income is low. <laughs> melee players and Smash players they can't necessarily live off the winnings that they make. Mm-mm. Good compared to League of Legends, Smite, Call of Duty, and all those other games. Yes, they need sponsorships. Mm-hmm. Now, in, in addition to the winnings, they need to be sponsored. They need somebody to pay them to make appearances at places. They need to be paid to literally hotels flights exactly <laughs> all that that needs to be compensated man mm. that, that's and that's right, unfortunately so. none of that is right now so right. it needs to be one of the top players armada he did his taxes and he was just he tweeted damn well it looks like i need to win more and he's already one of the top players <laughs> yeah dude he's only one he's only lost like two tourneys maybe this whole freaking year like uh-huh. so hungry box has been cleaning up shop yeah as yeah. well except for this past one or mango one but mm-hmm. but yeah. yeah hungry box has been kicking ass and he's been winning a lot but so is Arma- yeah armado's yeah. right up there with with top winnings but luckily for hungry box he uh i think last year or so he started working a full-time job that's like, good for him yeah yeah finally he was able to like he graduated he's like engineering is career you do that so i won't be appearing at too many tournaments liar and mm-hmm. so <laughs> <laughs> Well, his, yeah. uh, I feel like Luckily his flexibility there. Well, he's going to be, I feel like he's going to have the longest esports career just because of longevity of the character he oh, plays. Fuck so yeah. th- there was a, there was, <laughs> oh, man. there was a tweet he put where it was, hold on. I want to see if I can find it, but, but so he plays for all, for all people who don't know who hungry box is. He, uh, you know, same thing. Melee player fuck. plays Jigglypuff and people, when Jigglypuff first was on, arrived on the melee scene, people did not think that she was viable literally at all, that she was too slow. Her movement was too terrible in the air and all that type of stuff. And Hungrybox literally, uh, he he defied the odds. He made this character. He defined this character's meta. Mm. Um, but what's so funny is he's still very uh, real about what he's actually doing with this character. And I fucking love is it. He's just throwing out moves willy nilly. Well, so this, so he said that feeling. He has a uh, he has basically a picture of him with his eyes very wide open, like oh god, what's happening. It says that feeling when your placings are redefining a previously conceived meta when you're still spamming bear and it's ten years oh, later. Oh jeez. <laughs> yeah, man. If I don't mind me taking it to wrestling, Kevin Nash only had five moves. And one of those five moves involved us just fucking flipping his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works, man. <laughs> Whatever fucking works. If you can define a generation by doing something super, like, it, it goes to the thing of not, don't work hard, work smart. Mm, it allows you to stay healthy. Do it. Yep. You're going to have a long-ass career, Hungry Box. I hope you're okay with that. So, it's money time. Money, money. Not for us to take money from you, mm. but for us to help you decide what to spend your hard-earned money on. Yay. This is the video game releases for the week of May 9th through the 15th. Let us make your opinions for you. And of course, as provided by VG 24 7. Thank you, VG 24 7. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 new games out this week. Yeah. All right. 
So, uh, Amy, you want to you want to start? Mm-hmm. I'll spit out this first fizzo as Uncle Snoop would <laughs> say. Ignore, <laughs> it. it's, ignore all that. <laughs> so we got Monday, May 9th, Stellaris for the PC, and then moving on to Tuesday, a little game called Uncharted Four: A Thief's End. Mm-hmm. Mega Tag mentioned Blanc plus Neptune versus Zombies. What? The Book of Unwritten Tales 2. Ooh. The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth DLC coming out for the PS4 and the Xbox One. Finally. That's good. That's good for you console people that have loved Binding of Isaac. And now you're going to get the Afterbirth DLC and you're going to be, it's going to be that much more frustratingly hard than mm-hmm. the last one. Uh, and then we got for Wednesday, we got Raiden 5 for the Xbox One. Don't even know what the other four no ones clue. are. Uh, uh, I, there's too many ride-ins and raid-ins and fucking video games. Uh, XCOM 2, Alien Hunters DLC. That'll be fun. Mm. Uh, Super Meat Boy coming extremely late <laughs> to the Wii U. Just My a, God. A little bit. Just just like a, a few years short. A tad bit. It's My like those God. kids in Africa, they get like the Spurs Championship shirts from like 2007. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2016. <laughs> like, we should have got this a long time ago. Uh, and then we got Thursday, May 13th. We got Doom for the PC, PS4, Xbox One. If you want to know about Doom, you can listen to our other podcasts. Uh, Disney Art Academy for the 3DS. People will enjoy that. And we got Grand Prix Rockin' Racing for the Xbox One. That sounds like a terrible title. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Rockin' Racing. Rockin' Racing. It might be a good game. and I'm not doubting it. But, boy, that's not, a, that's not a good title. So the big booty daddy this week is Uncharted 4. Absolutely. And out of 30 reviews... They all the lowest score it got was an eight point five. Everything wow. else was a four to five or a nine or higher. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, this game is. I think the game of the week the this week is Uncharted Four. Yeah, go, go get that. So the thing. Also, well, here here is my question. And I think this is a good question for people who also haven't played it. The only Naughty Dog game, uh, at least the adventure ones, the new ones that are kind of like The Last of Us, I played is The Last of Us. That's the only one I've played. Never gone into the Uncharted series. So as somebody not knowing what to expect from Uncharted, what should I expect from Uncharted? Indiana Jones, the video game done correctly. Boom. That is a great, that is a great short and sweet description. Yep, yep. Go get that. So what's going on this week for Bad Inputs? Hmm. What is going on this week? I believe we're still doing some Banjo-Tooie. Yep, so that's still going to definitely be... Well, there are going to be some uploads. We decided to... Uh, Maybe call it short on a, an entire series. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> and you'll you'll see. Just go watch the series, and you'll see why. So if anybody, any of you are outraged and go, "I want my banjo tui," please understand that we need to move on to projects that we, we can like. expand on. Yep. Dun dun dun. dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> and also, as you saw, we've been live streaming and uploaded a little Overwatch beta gameplay, mm-hmm. and then I believe the new. A uh, bad taste comes out this Saturday. Ooh, and that's gonna be one to watch, people. And I mean, watch, watch, yeah, watch, watch your friggin' backs, watch over us. Colin, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, you can. I'm dead. Fuck. Yeah, twist, no. twist to the story. I'm dead. I've <laughs> never been here. I am a ghost, like Casper. He's cut off the internet, like <laughs> Casper. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm on. Tw- I'm on Twitter at the Ferg Nine One. And I am also on Twitch, CJFerg691, or t- twitch.tv slash CJFerg691. Where can I find you? They can find my black ass on Twitter, on Tokalurk15. <laughs> you know, I was going to say that, but you said it anyway. <laughs> Everyone says you always want to say that. Fuck it. <laughs> and, then, and then on Twitch, on twitch.tv slash Tokalurker. Of course, you can find us at YouTube.com, Google Up Bad Inputs, mm-hmm. see our funny little faces on there. And of course, we will see you next week with more stuff. I feel like saying if you can find my ass somewhere, it's just not it just doesn't have the same thing as you can find my black ass somewhere. <laughs> it really doesn't. There's just more of a it's just it just seems like Our good more like, you know what, I want to go see that black ass. <laughs> Our good friend Corey, he said he said to me when I was playing basketball, I was like fourteen, he's like, No, Toki, you should tell coach one day, yo, coach, kiss my black ass. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, why would you? Was there any motivation to say that? Not at all. Oh, just so you could say it. <laughs> yeah. And then and what? Have the audience laugh afterwards? And then he said and it. Clap. Yeah, he said it. To coach. <laughs> yeah, Coach Robinson, you don't kiss my black. <laughs> you, you know, he's like, what the hell? <laughs> you start fucking cracking up. Oh, that's fucking great. 
God, I think should we just make this go on for another forty seconds? Yeah, might as well go hit so that hour mark. So close to a minute. Yep. All right. So All right. here's a horrible story. I think right. I don't know if I saw on a let's play. Go My it. dad was leaving after he was visiting, and some kids warned him that a snake was in a drainage pipe. Uh-huh. So knowing what humans usually do with snakes, mm-hmm. he ran over it two times. <laughs> but it wasn't enough because the snake was still moving, oh, and the gust was it outside of the body. So then my mom was like, do we have a machete? <laughs> Just chop it up. I was like, no, we don't have a machete. And my 80-year-old aunt was like, oh, just come outside and drive over it again. So I tried to, but it's in the little spot between the driveway and the sidewalk where you can just fuck up your rim. So I drove over it four times. Oh, my God. And it was still moving for some reason. And my 80-year-old aunt was like, I can do it. (laughs) Let me try it. I was like, no. So I ran over it slowly two more times. And it was finally dead. And by, (laughs) by Wednesday morning, No, by Tuesday morning, this happened on Sunday, Mm -hmm. it was gone. Either someone picked it up and threw it away, the the neighbor. Yeah. Oh, no. Or the crows who were picking at it all Sunday just took it off somewhere. Oh, my God. But it doesn't help that when the neighbors came home, the wife, hot wife, she (laughs) started taking pictures of it. I'm sure it went up on her Facebook. And then two cars passed by, and they both separately stopped and took a picture of a dead snake on the sidewalk. Because it's a fucking tourist attraction. Oh, God. Santa Clarita is fucking boring. <laughs> yep. My, my snake battles are returning. Oh, my God. I have expected <laughs> that story to end where you're like, Aunt saying, all right, I can do it. And she was going to take the car and then just like, she would have just put it in uh, in park and then just fucking just floored it. And oh, then just like, horrible. Yeah. There's like uh, blood everywhere. Like oh starts God. doing donuts. That's that's another reason. <laughs> reason B, why I didn't let her. I thought she would just crash the car into the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Oh, man, that would be fucking awesome. All right, that was a good story to leave you guys off with. <laughs> Motor of the story, kill snakes with cars. Yep, kill all the snakes. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Later. Holy cod tigers. Oh, it's, it's dog <laughs> hair all over the place.